Lord to Pastor from India again. We hope that you are watching our messages. We are keeping one message every month in the net. I am very happy that a lot of people around the world writing letters to me. And your letters are encouraging us a lot. Please pass this message to the people. And today, the message goes like this. The world is not worthy for us. This world is not worthy for us. God, the Spirit of the God asked me to preach this one to the people. This message is only for the God's children. If this message is only for the God's servant. This message is only for the believers around the globe. This world is not worthy for us. Nowadays, wherever we see around the world, the real God's servants, the real God's children, the believers, are struggling for their existence, struggling to pay their bills. The worldly people, the nominal Christians, the nominal speakers, the nominal believers, they are growing. And the people, the real people of the God, they are struggling and some people are discouraging. For these people, this message will definitely console, this message will definitely encourage. Because this world is not worthy for us, the people who live for Jesus. This is not our world. Jesus said very clearly, this world rejected me and this world will reject you. So, when you are getting the rejection, when you are getting the pressures to survival, let us not discourage. Let us be encouraged in the spirit of the God and renew your power, renew your spirit to go ahead with the mission, to go to reach the unreached. Here we'll see some scriptures, what they are saying about this. If you go through Matthew 10, 22, all men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Don't think that people will appreciate you when you are doing God's work. Don't think that people will encourage you when you are living for the God. When you started to live for the God, when you started to proclaim the gospel, when you are reborn, then immediately Satan will pay attention towards you to disturb you and to destroy you. So, in this world, you don't think that you will get encouragement. If you go through the Hebrews chapter 11, St. Paul given the definition of the faith in the first two verses. And he gave the gist of the believers and of God's children who struggled on the face of the earth for their existence. They struggled their Lord. They are not bothered and cared the struggling because they know that they are going to live with the God in the eternal kingdom forever and ever. By mentioning about all the gist of the believers and children of God who struggled on the face of the earth, he mentioned in the end, Hebrews 11, 38, he mentioned this. This world was not worthy of them. They are won in deserts and mountains and in caves and the holes and in the ground. So, for these people, this world is not worthy. They were beaten by the stones. They were killed. They struggled their Lord on the face of the earth. So, let us not worry for the troubles on the face of the earth because we live here according to the Psalm 90 as written by Moses. Our life is 70 years. If you are healthy, 80 years. So our span of life on the face of the earth is hardly 80 years. That's very small. We have to live forever and ever in the eternal life with the living God. So. We were called to face these troubles. We were called to face these problems, struggling to proclaim the gospel, struggling to bring the people to the Christ. So this world, there's nothing for us to love the world. A lot of people nowadays, in the name of Jesus, they're building the kingdoms on the face of the earth. This earth is not permanent for anybody. Nobody can take their kingdoms to the heaven or hell. 
Everybody have to leave everything on the face of the earth. They have to go to the heaven or to the hell where they live forever and ever. So I encourage the God's children around the world. Do not worry. Do not worry. Be in Christ in the spirit of God. And go ahead with the ministry. Here I'd like to read some verses to encourage you in the spirit. Colossians 3 1. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So, if you have the Jesus in you, if you are living with Jesus, do not look to the world and the things of the world. Look towards Jesus and look up where we live together with the living God forever and ever. In the end, in the finish, I would like to say the thing what was happening in the theological in India. St. Thomas came to India. Actually, he came to the southern part of the India. But in our theology, there is a saying. He came to the North India also. Whether it is true or false, there is a story which will be helpful to us. When Thomas, St. Thomas, one of the apostles, came to India. One king, a North Indian king, named Abulkar, he wanted to build a beautiful city. And then the people said, a Jewish man, we found a Jewish man who, got, who is the architect. And they brought uh, uh, this Thomas to the king Abulkar. And Abulkar asked him, hey, would you like to build a building for me? And he said, okay, give the plan and the money and give me the time. During the time, nobody should come there to watch the work and supervise the work. Whenever the work finished, I'll come and I know that uh, building to you. And king agreed for that. But the time lapsed, the time is over, and Thomas was not found. And the king sent the people and they brought Thomas to the king. And king asked the Thomas, King Abulkar asked the Thomas, where is my building? And Thomas said, King, I built your building already. And king said, there is no building. And Thomas said, I build your building in the heaven. It is a true building. If you go Second Corinthians chapter 5, first two verses says, the buildings on the earth will demolish, will destroy. But there is a building. There are houses where never destroyed, built by the heart of God, where we live forever and ever in the heaven. So I encourage the God's suffering and the true Christians who are struggling on the face of the earth, do not live the world and do not live the worldly things and do not dream for them because this world is not worthy for us. God sent us, God made us to proclaim this gospel to the entire world and tell the God's servants and tell the people to accept Jesus as their personal Savior, to live with Him forever and ever in their eternal life. So, in the conclusion, once again I tell you, my beloved brothers and sisters around the world, this world is not worthy for us. As a matter of fact, we are struggling here in India. We are doing wonderful work here. We have 800 children, Sunday school children. We have 5,000 in and out congregation. We have no permanent church building. We hide a building and we are worshipping there. We know, we know that we have to struggle to serve the Lord. We know. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, do not expect the worldly things, do not expect the worldly blessings to proclaim the gospel, to live for Jesus. Because this world is not worthy for us. Let us live for Jesus. Let us proclaim the gospel to the people. Even prepare to become the martyrs of the Jesus Christ. Prepare to give your life to proclaim this gospel. This world is not worthy for us. We live with Him in the eternal life. That is our world where we live forever and ever. May God bless you with this message. Please pass this message to the friends and relatives and the people. We love you. We love you. We love you.